Hello, everybody. Welcome to a Monday live crochet along. It's the Jade and Stitches show. It's a, a very chilly Monday. We woke up to snow this morning, so we thought it would be a perfect segue <laughs> to uh, play with our snowflake applique. Uh, we have a tutorial for this. We'll link that in the description box down below. We also have a free pattern for this over on our web page and the link to that is in the description box down below too. So if you've never picked up our snowflake um, pattern, please feel free to do that and follow along with today's tutorial. I'm going to tweak things a little bit though. I'm going to try and make it super big. So same pattern, but extra big yarn and hook so that I can hang them in the window and they look like nice big um, hanging snowflakes in the widow window. So that's that's the idea today. Um, just for reference, this is a size three weight yarn and I used like a, a three millimeter hook with it. So that's how small it is with yarn and weight. I weight yarn weight and a hook of that particular um, size. It fits in my hand. Let me just give it a quick measure and uh, so the original is two and a half inches or six and a half centimeters in diameter. So that's to give you the context. That's what I'm starting with. Pattern isn't gonna change, but the hook and the yarn certainly will. So welcome everybody. I'm glad you could all make it today. And um, I'm gonna talk quickly about our tools and materials. Mr. and Stitches is in the house. Showing off, uh, hello everybody. Showing off old photographs. I'm everybody? enjoying coffee and cookies mm -hmm. right now. Yes, we got him his own box of cookies. This trying week. to stay warm. <laughs> yeah, it's uh cool when the snow lands. <laughs> um, I've got a measuring tape. This is just more for my um interest than yours. It's not a super necessary thing, so I'm gonna put that aside. A pair of scissors and a yarn needle, the usual. Um, I've also got a stitch marker. I might need this, I might not, I don't think I will, but I always like to have one just in case. And I'm using an eight millimeter hook today. It's also known as an L or an 11. I'm gonna start with this. I might need to go up. I am not sure yet. This is an experiment um, and we're gonna do it together. So I've also got some thread. This is actual sewing thread. This is what I intend to hang the actual snowflakes with but you could use fishing line or embroidery floss or more yarn or whatever you've got lying around so that's why this is here i'm not actually doing any sewing i just i'm going to use it to hang it and let's talk yarn i've got some blanket yarn this is your size six uh super bulky weight yarn it's the polyester stuff um it's the the thickest white yarn i had so i was going to try um, first one in this sort of slightly off-white that I had and then maybe another one in this if it really works out well and the thing I'm really curious about is this this is some old nylon um, macrame rope or crafting rope that I've had in my stash since the beginning of time because I think it came from one of my aunts who was probably doing like a macrame kit thing in the late 70s, early 80s. So this is old. Um, and I thought I would try crocheting one of the um, snowflakes with it just because it's, well, it's big and it's thick. It's definitely what I would consider in the size six super bulky weight category. And um, it's stiff and I think it might actually work hanging in a window. So that's gonna be one of my little experiments today. Um, if you're sort of dash, dashing into your stash to pull out some yarn, um, I would try any kind of super bulky weight that you've got in any color that you like, obviously. Um, I don't think it has to be nylon or polyester. It could be acrylic, cotton, blend. Um, and you might even want to try one with a couple strands held together, but maybe not for your first run at the snowflake if you've not made one of these before, because there's a lot of little um, chaining picots that you want to get comfortable doing before maybe you start trying to f uh, fiddle with several strands of yarn held together. So um, which one do you think I should try first, the blanket yarn or the nylon yarn? Do you want to just sort of s s say it in the chat? We won't bother with a poll right off the bat. Um, and uh, I'll try whichever one everybody thinks might be cool. I'm going to do them both eventually, but I don't know which one to start with. Everyone is requesting yellow. Yellow. Ye yellow. Yellow snow. Yellow snow. 
Yellow snow color. Are you kidding? Yes. <laughs> I am kidding. Someone made a joke. I think it was Catherine. Okay. <laughs> so it looks like most of you are, are sort of voting for the blanket yarn. All right, so let's start with the blanket yarn right off the bat. This is a warm white. Um, and uh, I've got the bright white, but I had just a little bit of this warm white left over, and I thought it might look kind of pretty. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to get my sleeves pulled up and out of the way. All right, like I said, if you um, if you haven't already, you can feel free to download our free pattern for this. It's over on our website. The link is in the description box down below. We also have a tutorial, so if you want to catch up with it quicker or a little bit later, um, we've got that link available for you too. I'm going to start with a cinch circle. So um, cinch circles give some folks a little bit of trouble, but not everybody. Um, I will say for the purpose of this pattern, if you don't want to use the cinch circle, it's not super imperative that you do. So if you wanted to make a chained ring of five or six chains, then you could do the chained ring instead. Uh, but I'm gonna go with the cinch circle because I do want to try and, and cinch it up nice and tight in the middle. Uh, but it's a snowflake. I don't think it matters a whole heck of a lot. So there's my search cinch circle and my chain one to secure it. I'm going to work 12 single crochet into this circle now. So 12 single crochet. And I'm going to work over top of that short tail so I can cinch everything shut. I like the blanket yarn, but it's not always super easy to see your stitches so I like to try and use a slightly larger hook with it. Just for everyone that is curious I've got the free patterns link to our pattern workshop page on our website um, that is pinned at the top or bottom of the chat. It, she should see it as a blue bar and that'll take you to the page and then you just scroll down and find the snowflake and then we also have the video tutorial, which I will put in the chat if anyone wants to watch that um, cons more, more concise video. Thank you, mister. You're welcome. Do I get another cookie? Yes, you get another cookie. All right. <laughs> bonus today. It's my pay raise. It's your pay raise. One extra cookie. All right, that's 12 single crochet into that little circle. I'm going to grab that tail and I'm going to cinch it shut. Um, maybe not super super tight no no that's that's fine and i'm just going to count back to make sure i get to, into the right stitch to join so we are joining this one let's see one two i'd also like to shout out nico for gifting a membership before we started oh my gosh yes thank you, thank nico. you nico and fairy we were dealing with squirrels we we had a little bit of a late start the squirrels came back but yes. everything's good now everything's fine now i think fairy queen won it so congratulations fairy queen and thank you nico all right i'm going to join with a slip stitch um i'm going to worry about weaving in that little tail later because this is quite the experiment so here we go this is the center of my snowflake and if i pick up my original one for you all to see this little center right there in the middle of the snowflake, that's this. So the equivalent, that's quite a big change. <laughs> so already this is almost the same, same dimension across as my original snowflake. So this should be a really nice big upsize to hang in the window. And I'm going with the eight millimeter hook and, um, because it is a little on the tight side, but I don't want it to be like a, a floppy um, snowflake. And the blanket yarn, isn't super stiff, which is another reason I'm interested in trying this this nylon. Uh, so <laughs> we'll see how this goes. Okay, for row two, this is there's only two rows in this entire little um, pattern. So that was row one. There's 12 single crochet in the circle. You join with a slip stitch, and now we do row two. And in row two, that's when we create all the little uh, snowflake. Um, well, what are these called? points snowflake points I'm sure there's a much more elegant elegant word for it than that but we chain one and single crochet into the same place that we chained out of to start so join with a slip stitch chain one and single crochet all in the same stitch so there's our first single crochet and you know what it might be worthwhile just to mark that stitch with the stitch marker because I'm using that fluffy blanket yarn and it's not always easy to see what your first stitch of the row is, especially if it's short. So I'm gonna mark that stitch with a stitch marker. And here we go. We're gonna start with the first point of the snowflake. We are going to double crochet into the next stitch. 
So that brings us up a little bit. And now we're going to create this little tri pico. There's three little little tiny picos kind of actually it's it's not really a pico. It's just a lot of chaining and slip stitching. It's not difficult, but you got to keep track of it. So we chain 3. Skip the first chain and slip stitch into the second and third chains. So that's one slip stitch and two slip stitches. Then we chain two, skip the first chain, slip stitch into the second chain, and slip stitch into the same place where you slip stitched the second time in that first chain of three. So it's basically right next door. So just slip stitch back into that. And then we're going to do that again. Chain two, skip the first chain from the hook, find the second one, slip stitch into that one, and then slip stitch back into the same place at the base of that first chain three. And that is the little kind of three pointed part of the first point of our snowflake. So that's the arm, the arm of the snowflake. I'm going to be doing this the whole day here, <laughs> arm of the snowflake. Then we're going to double crochet back into the same place that we double crocheted in to start. So if you pull up on your double crochet, you'll see, you can see my finger there. That's where I'm going to double crochet into. So I'm double crocheting back into the same place. That completes the first arm. And we'll be doing six of these all together. So six arms in that little snowflake. It's basically this thing right here. So there's the little three pointed part. There's the double crochets that it sits on top of. And we're going to single crochet into the next stitch. So in between arms around this snowflake, we're single crocheting. So you single crochet into a stitch, build an arm in the next stitch, single crochet into the next stitch, build an arm in the next stitch. So you'll have six arms with the little three part point at the top and three and six single crochets in between all the way around. So we've single crocheted. Now we're going to build another arm. So into this next stitch, we're going to double crochet. This is going to be a very fluffy snowflake. Chain three, slip stitch into the second and the third chains from the hook. Well, we skip that first chain from the hook because that is what kind of gives you the ability to bend backwards on yourself. Chain two, slip stitch into the second chain from the hook. So you're skipping that first chain and slip stitch into the bottom of the chain three. And then we repeat that again, chain two, skip that first chain, slip stitch into the next chain and slip stitch into the bottom of the chain three. And that gives us that little three pointed little fingers on the end of the arm of the snowflake, I guess. I'm giving it anatomy. <laughs> double crochet back into the same place that you double crocheted in to begin that arm. And then single crochet into the next stitch along the snowflake. And I'm going to just pause. And let's see. I know that the snowflakes always look funny when you first start them, but once you keep repeating that little arm pattern, that's really cute. It starts to look more and more like a snowflake. So basically I've got these two arms done on the snowflake. So if I cover them, you can tell that it looks a little funny, but when I uncover it, you can sort of see that six pointed snowflake image. So I think this is going to be, this is actually going to end up being kind of cute. And I just realized, you know, you could decorate these because they're so large. You could sort of put some sparkling beads on them or like some pretty little buttons or something. I think that would look really, really cute. All right, another arm into the next stitch. I'm going to double crochet and I'm going to start that little three pointed finger thing. Chain three to begin. Slip stitch into the second and third chains from the hook. Blanket yarn is soft and fluffy and a little slippery. Chain two, slip stitch into the second chain and then into the bottom of the chain three. And again, chain two, slip stitch into the second chain from the hook. 
and into the bottom of the chain three, which sits right above the top of the double crochet. There we go, there's my three fingers. Then I double crochet back into the same place that I double crocheted out of. So I'll double crochet right into that same stitch. There it is there. And single crochet into the next stitch. So let me take another pause, pull out those fingers. Yeah, so there's half a snowflake finished already. That is gonna be cute. Now I'm really curious to see what the nylon one's gonna look like. <laughs> much, much bigger. All right, arm number four, double crochet into the next stitch. Start those three pointed little fingers. Gotta be patient with this blanket yarn. I like the end effect, but uh, I can't crochet with it like I crochet with regular yarn because it just, it's soft and slippery, but it's also sticky at the same time. It's the strangest stuff. Double crochet back into the same place after completing that little three pointed finger thing, the top of the arm and then single crochet into the next stitch before I start all over again. I've got two more arms left to go. I'm not even sure if I'm gonna have enough yarn. Hope I do. Yeah, I should have enough to finish. Double crochet to begin the arm in the next stitch. Chain three. Slip stitch into the second and third chains from the hook. Chain two, slip stitch into the second chain from the hook and into the base of the original chain three, right here. Chain two, slip stitch into the second chain from the hook. It's a little tight, but I can do it. And into the base of the chain three. Sometimes you have to pull things apart just to see where you're at. There we go. And double crochet back into the same place that I double crocheted originally for that arm. There we go. And single crochet into the next stitch. And I should have just enough yarn left to finish that last arm and the last single crochet before I finish. This is cute. It's official, it's cute. Yeah, that's gonna look really cute hanging in the window. <laughs> okay, one more arm, and then I'll try one in nylon. So double crochet into the next stitch to start the arm, chain three, and slip stitch into the second and third chains, and chain two, and slip stitch into the second, and into the base of the chain three, And once more. And a double crochet into the same stitch to finish that arm. And I'm not single crocheting into the next stitch. Instead, I'm going to slip stitch into that first single crochet that I made, so. I just took my stitch marker off. I'm going to slip stitch right into that single crochet that started the whole thing. And that is a very fluffy blanket yarn snowflake. I'm going to fasten off, weave in my tail, and then I'm going to pull out all my little arms. Nico. <laughs> Thank you, Nico. Nico has just gifted another membership. Thank you so much. And Miss Jersey won it. Congratulations, Miss Jersey. Welcome back to the family. I'm gonna weave in both of my little tails around the back here. So I'm just gonna grab any old loops I can find. 
for this middle tail. Not too worried about this little guy. There we go. Maybe a couple more. There we go. And for the big one, I'm going to, eh, same thing. I'm just gonna grab whatever sort of visible loops I can get my, my, my needle under. Um, I'm not worried too much about like anything showing through to the other side. The blanket yarn is so fluffy that the loops and the stitches all tend to kind of blend into each other, which in this case really isn't a bad thing. Um, and it makes weaving in a tail kind of a little less stressful because it doesn't really matter where you end up weaving that tail. It will disappear into the rest of the, the bits of fluff. Hmm, that's interesting. Looks like I got, well, it's just a long, bit of a long loop there. It's on the back, who cares? We have a membership milestone from Kimberly. Kimberly! Hi, Kimberly! Kimberly says, hi, good morning, Jada and Mr. and Stitches and everyone. Well, thank you. Hello and good morning, Miss Kimberly, who's been a member for 19 months. Thank you very much. It's a nice cozy Monday. All right. So there's my first arm, my second arm. I'm going to pull up on those little stitches to make that arm stand up. Arm number three, arm number four, arm number five, and arm number six. Now, I would not block this uh, with steam or anything because it's polyester and I wouldn't want it to melt, but honestly, I don't think it's gonna need it. It's stiff enough that I think if I lay it flat up against, like if it's hanging flat up against the window, it'll be just fine. It's not gonna like pucker or fall forward or anything like that and there's enough weight that I think it'll keep it sort of it'll keep its shape as it hangs in the window um, so that's really cute I'm going to just cut a little bit of thread now maybe a lot of thread because I want to hang this uh, I'll probably hang this from there's a lot of ways you can hang these things if you get those suction cup hooks for the windows those things are great uh, but if you don't have that you can hang them off of your uh, curtain rods if you have those like I have curtain rods on our windows so I will be hanging mine on the curtain rods and I'll just double up the length of yarn or thread I should say in this case that I want it to be um, so what I'm doing is I'm going to just take the ends of the thread and make a little knot and then I'm going to hang it from the very top of this loop. So I'm just going to drag my thread through the top loop and I'm going to take that end, pull it through the loop. And now I've got a hanging, I've got a th hanging thread and to go and hang this on, uh, you can either hang it on a hook or if you're going to hang it on the uh, curtain rod, you would do the same thing. You would kind of reach around the curtain rod open up the, the loop of the thread like this, pull the whole snowflake through it, and then um, pull taunt, and it'll hang on the curtain rod in the window. So that's what I'm gonna do. So there you go, that is the blanket yarn version. Let's see what the final size is. I think that's really cute, nice and fluffy. Hmm, 16 centimeters across or six inches, so from two and a half inches to six inches. That's a pretty nice upsize. That is, look how cute that is. <laughs> One and two. All right, I like that. I'm now going to try this crazy uh, nylon yarn because I've never, nylon, nylon macrame cord. I guess this is more like cord and not wool. Um, I've never crocheted with anything like this, so this is going to be a little bit of an experiment, but I thought um, since it's nylon, I might actually hang a couple of these outside. Um, I like the idea of hanging, I like crochet outside as outside decoration, but it's tricky because, you know, the wind and the rain and the snow and the cold and the fluctuating temperatures in this country can really play havoc with anything you put outside, like including your house. <laughs> 
Um, but this is pretty sturdy nylon, so I think it'll probably last outside about as well as maybe a flag would. Um, so let's see how that goes. Okay, let me get my little goodies out of the way. I'll put these guys over here. And let's start. A little sip of my water here. Membership milestone from Alia. Hi, Alia. Alia has been a member for 48 months. Goodness me, thank you so much. Happy Monday, she says. Loitering, listening at work, stay warm. <laughs> I like that. Yes, stay warm, everybody. It's definitely, you know, getting frostier out there. I'm going to start with my. Woo! I wonder if I should upsize my hook. Can you describe mm. to us how that cord feels? Yes. Is um, it soft? Is it spongy? Is it smooth? It's... Can you hold it up a little closer to the camera? I am. Let me just grab a bigger hook. I think I'm going to I'm gonna switch up to my 9 millimeter because this is definitely thicker. Just to give you some context, here's the blanket yarn I was just using. And here is the cord. And you can see that this is definitely much thicker than the blanket yarn. And it's not, it's not like itchy. It's not nearly as soft and spongy as the blanket yarn. Like there's definitely some more strength and stiffness to it, like some more shape. Um, it feels like, I don't know if you've ever like played with that Fentex nylon yarn that you can make slippers and stuff out of, it feels like that. So it's not stiff, it's not, it's not itchy, but it's not soft. Um, it's a little squishy and it's got that, just that slightly kind of, I want to use the word stickiness that nylon tends to have. So I'm going to use a bigger hook for this one because this does feel bigger. I'm going to try my cinch circle again with the nine and if it still feels a bit too big, I might switch up to the 10. I think the 9 might be okay. We have a membership milestone from Joy. Hi, Joy. Joy has been a member for 33 months. Thank you, Joy. Joy says, happy Monday. Today, love the snowflakes. I'm listening while at work today. Oh, good. I'm glad you guys are able to listen while you're at work. It's kind of like, like a really personalized radio station. <laughs> One, two, all right, I think I'm already going to have to make my cinch circle bigger to start with because these are going to be big stitches, but I think I like the size of those stitches. So I'm going to go with a bigger loop to start. And I'm going to just chain, get that chain out of the way, and that'll secure my circle. So then I don't have to worry about holding on to it. There we go. Hey, Lucy, thank you so much. Lucy's just gifted a membership. Thank you, Lucy. And Kim won it. Hey, congratulations, Kim. All right, that's a bigger circle to work into. Uh, again, like I said, you don't have to use the cinch circle if you don't want to. Um, I like the sort of the closed center, but if it gives you trouble, especially if you're using like a big, chunky, weird yarn like this one, then you can try the chain five or chain six, depending on how your tension is, and then join with a slip stitch and work into the ring. Um, I'm going to continue to use the cinch circle and now I'm going to try and get 12 single crochets into this. Oh yeah, this this definitely feels a lot different. And of course it's it's not really made for crocheting, so it kind of wants to almost like un, like unspool the other way on me. I'm going to mark that first single crochet so that when I get back to it, it's easy for me to find. Connie! Thank you, Connie! Connie has just gifted a membership. Thank you so much, Connie. And Darla has won it. Congratulations, Darla. Welcome to the family. So this is going to be a little slow going until I get the feel for this nylon yarn. I do know that it's it's kind of like because I'm playing with a big craft cord, I don't have to be as 
neat and nuanced as I usually am when I'm crocheting. So I'm just going to grab this and hold on to those stitches any way that I feel I can. How many have I got? One, two, three, four, five, six. So there's six, six down, six more to go. All right, this won't be that difficult. It's actually nice to have something big to hold on to. That's not a bad thing. It's also not a bad thing to slow down sometimes. And if these work out, I'm just going to use this whole thing of cord because I don't really think there's a lot left on it. And there might even be like a bit of a, I'm not sure if this is solid or if it's actually wrapped on something. Um, I'm just going to make a whole bunch of these and hang them outside. I think that's going to look so cute. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, three more to go. And number 12. Sometimes when I'm working in a cinch circle, you'll see me kind of cinching up the circle as I go. That's just because I realize I don't need as much um, space to work and cinching it gives me a little more tail so that I've got more to grip when I go to, to close it. Um, so when you're working into a cinch circle, feel free to manipulate it as you go. I'm gonna double check that I've got all six and I do. So I'm gonna cinch that up as tight as I feel it wants to go. I'm not going to really push the issue. Yeah, that's about as tight as it's gonna go, but that's okay. And now I'm gonna join with a cinch, I should say a slip stitch into that first stitch. I am gonna work over top of this messy tail this time, as opposed to weaving it in later. So the middle of this snowflake is gonna have a, a space in the middle, but um, again, it's a snowflake, so I don't really think that's a bad thing. It's um gonna be a little lacier and because it's a bit bigger that'll give my my snowflake arms a little more space in between hmm that's a neat that's that's different I've never crocheted with this before so it feels funny <laughs> not funny bad but just funny different I'm gonna chain one and single crochet in the same place that I joined and that's the first of six single crochets that I'll have all the way around and in between my single crochets will be one of those snowflake arms. So I'm going to unravel some of this here. All right. Here we go. Into the next stitch, I'm going to work an arm. So double crochet to start. And I'm taking my time and I'm making sure that each one of those stitches is as neat as I can make it because this is funny stuff. Okay, chain three. And then slip stitch into the second and third chains from the hook. Easy does it. Okay, chain two, slip stitch into the second chain from the hook. It's a lot easier to see my stitches this time around because it's not fluffy. Slip stitch into the base of the chain three right here. And then I'm going to repeat that once more, chain two. Slip stitch into the second chain from the hook and into the bottom of the chain three, which is this space right here. You should see that space. And once I've done that, I'm going to double crochet back into the same place that I worked the first double crochet part of this arm. Hmm. Did I split something? Why does that feel funny? I'm not sure. I feel like I split something. It's nylon, so, oh yeah, there's just a little bit of my hook touched on that. There we go. So I'm gonna double crochet back into the same place that I double crocheted the first time. So same stitch and double crochet. There we go. 
and then single crochet into the next stitch and that's this guy right here and I'm working it's very, on uh, it's very right similar to crocheting with rope isn't it? it is <laughs> except that this isn't like sharp painful rope like you yeah, know how it some looks rope like is rope it's, it's thick it's cord but it's so it's softer than typical rope yeah um it's gonna be even bigger than this one and it's kind of shiny i i think this is gonna look really nice actually and because it's kind of stiff nylon cord it's not floppy like i don't uh, these are going to hang outside really nicely. They're not all going to sort of bend over on each other or fold in on themselves. So I think this is going to work out pretty nicely. Okay, so double crochet to start the next one. I'm still working over top of that messy tail, just so I don't have to weave it in. Actually, you know what? Yeah, there we go. Taking my time, nice and easy. So there's the first double crochet of the arm. I'm going to finish off the points and then I'll be double crocheting back into the same place. So now I'm going to do that little three pointed thing. It looks like I'm struggling, but I'm not. I'm just trying to make sure that I, I keep some tension on these um, stitches and I don't, um, I don't let, like, I don't let the cord kind of get too big so that I wind up with, like, you know, extra big loops or anything. Um, I'm using a plastic hook because it's a big hook. And because it's a plastic hook, it's nice and smooth. So it, it actually runs very smoothly um, alongside this, this cord. So if you're going to try this with this kind of nylon cord, I definitely recommend a plastic hook. So I'm being told in the chat, we had a question from Amanda. Sure. Let's see if I can find Amanda's question here. Okay, there it is. Could you start with a circle of six, then a row of 12 after that to fill the gap? Maybe six double crochet with a chain space between each? So, uh, yeah, I know exactly what you're asking. Um, hang on, let me just get this last single crochet in and then I can refocus my thoughts. <laughs> so I'm going to work that little single crochet. I might just trim this crazy nylon stuff here. Maybe one more stitch over top of it. There we go. Okay. So there's my little single crochet. Also, we have a membership renewal from Karen. And Karen, welcome to Marino. Thank you. A membership milestone from Becky. Hey, Becky. Becky says, Becky's been a member for 11 months. Thank you, Becky. Hi, Jada and Mr. I'm jealous because no snow here and forecast is El Nino and warmer this year. Well, that's why we've got snow today. <laughs> so early in November, we figure, because it's a... Uh, warmer temperatures so if it hovers around the zero degree celsius mark for us we're going to get more snow it's not going to stick around like it's gone i'm looking outside and it's i'm back to having green grass so you're not going to exactly going to get snow that's going to stick but um we're going to see more of it that's for sure okay uh back to this is looking really cute can i just say the question uh amanda asked is can we change up the center a bit um so i'm going to say Yes, if you wanted to start with six single crochet, let's say, and then switch up to um, two single crochet in each stitch all the way around for row two, and then do row three as the big sort of the snowflake arms, that would work. Um, 12 double crochets for row one, um, that might work. It would make for a larger center, but uh, you could try that. Um, and maybe it's not maybe not double crochet chain one but maybe like half double crochet chain one half double crochet chain one six times so half double crochet chain one six times around uh, but remembering to use the chain one spaces for maybe the single crochets um, so that the arms of your um, snowflake are all based off the half double crochet so it looks a little more solid where it needs to 
Um, I kind of like the idea of that one better. So once I finish this, I'll try one of those using regular weight yarn and uh, we'll see what that looks like. I like that. Great suggestion there, Amanda. And yes, I absolutely think you could you could mess with the middle so long as you get to a base of 12 before you put the arms on. Uh, lots of room to play with this particular pattern. I think I'm gonna be able to get my double crochet right over top of this little tail end. Maybe a bit fluffy, but that's okay. It'll sit to the back eventually. Um, I I think I'm gonna like the way this looks. Like I, it's nice. It look it almost looks like ship ship rope. <laughs> One. Come on. Two and three. Everyone is seeing a little reindeer head when you're at that stage. It does. It does look like a little reindeer yes, head. Yes, little reindeer. You guys want to sure. see? You guys want a sneak peek at one of a, at an upcoming tutorial? Speaking of reindeer, <laughs> I mean, I'm going to guess you're not that interested. What? So. No, I don't think anyone's interested in. Probably no. That's probably a, good, a big no. I'm getting a lot of no's. Not interested here. <laughs> um, don't we have a reindeer face? I feel like we did one years ago. We've got an a reindeer, or was that the fancy granny square? We've got a chibi chubby tubby reindeer. That's it. It's the little. It's the little chibi chubby tubby. And we have. That's right. A sneak peek of a. No, nope, there's a lot of no thanks. No, not interested. interested. Don't need a sneak peek. <laughs> um, thanks, Jada, but no thanks. <laughs> yep. No one's interested in the sneak peek. <laughs> so don't bother. Thanks, Jada. No thanks. <laughs> All right. Hang on a second, guys. I've got it right here. I absolutely love ornaments. Um, tree ornaments are one of my favorite things to make besides stockings. So Christmas stockings, number one. Christmas tree ornaments number two. Um, so this little reindeer head is, uh, uh, we designed it actually uh, a couple Christmases ago, um, but hadn't had the time to turn it into a tutorial yet. So, uh, so this little guy is coming your way soon and that's what the back looks like. So he's solid all the way around and I've just got a little bit of uh, crochet thread there tacked on him to hang him with. You can hang them with anything you want. Um, you could use really cute beads for eyes or even safety eyes if you wanted to. And it looks, I know it looks complicated, but it's super simple. It's an easy little scrap, um, little scrap project. And uh, we'll be doing that a little later on. <laughs> All right, where was I? I finished that. I've got a double crochet back down into the same place. And that will be arm number three of this nylon cord snowflake. This is going to be an outdoor snowflake for sure. I might hang this on a tree. I might hang this on the front door. Um, so I have to keep kind of unraveling it here and it wants to twist on me. But that's okay. That's why I'm taking it easy. So there's three arms done. So that's half of it made so far. Kind of like it with the center out. I might put something really fancy in there, like a a big reflective plastic gemstone or a really fancy like shiny metal button or something. Yeah, I like that. Okay, arm number four. Here we go. Double crochet. See how nice and stiff this is. This doesn't. This is gonna hang. This is gonna fare well outside. I think. One, two, three. Hey, Kimberly, welcome to Silk. It's a re, a re welcome. That's a re welcome. I gotta hang these somewhere where the squirrels aren't gonna steal them. Cause they will, they'll try. They're maniacs. If it's not nailed down, they'll steal it. Don't 
double crochet into the same place as the first double crochet of this arm. One and two. And then single crochet into the next stitch. Kind of anchors it in a way. There we go. Oh yeah. Gosh. That's I'm actually surprised at how pretty that is. <laughs> I don't know why. I just am. I think that's going to look so nice. I hope I can get a few. I'm, I'm, I'm rapidly depleting what's on this, so I hope I can get at least two out of this for outside. But now I think I'm going to go raid my craft stash and see if I've got more cord. Because it's not that difficult. To, when you're only working, like, when it's not that big a project, um, crocheting with a not so flexible thing like cording a rope it's doable like it's this this isn't this isn't scratchy or painful so uh, nylon typically isn't like if I was trying to use hemp that would look really cool too but that might be a little bit more scratchy if I was just using like hemp cord well the reindeer head is a big hit Everyone loves the little reindeer head. It's uh, it's cute. It I, I really cute. like it. I think it's going to look neat. I think I might put like, you know, um, little bead eyes on it the next time. Like I embroidered those ones, but like once again, when it comes to ornaments, you can just go absolutely over the top or super simple. So um, we're going to have fun with that one. That one's going to be cute. So this uh, snowflake is turning out much bigger. Yes, much bigger. Um, it helps because and that center chubbier. is open. It's stiffer. Um, it's got a bit of a shine to it. Oh my goodness gracious. Krista! Thank you so much, Krista. Krista just picked up a pattern in our Etsy shop. Thank you. All right. There's number five. I've got one more to go. Gee. Gee, this is pretty. Oh my gosh. Okay. And that's the single crochet there. So double crochet, when you finish this, there's always going to look like what's sort of like a, a false stitch, but that's just because we joined the first row with a slip stitch. So you're just skipping over what looks like a stitch but isn't and joining with a slip stitch in that first single crochet. You want six arms and six single crochets in between. So once you get back, to, you finish that last arm, you're slip stitching to join in the first single crochet. So don't be confused by the false stitch. Just ignore it. I'm going to slip stitch into the second and third chains here. And once again, if you're just getting here a little late, uh, we have a tutorial for this. It's much more succinct using regular yarn and a hook. And we have a free written pattern over on our website. Uh, link for that is in the description box, and I highly encourage you to avail yourselves of the free patterns we've got over there. We've got a whole bunch. So if you're starting a pattern collection or a pattern journal, crochet project journal, something like that, then that's a good place to get some free patterns. And we've got tutorials for all of them. Almost all of them, I should say. Almost all of them. Some of them are super secret special. All right, one last double crochet here. And it looks like I've got enough to make another one, so I'll probably make another one later. And once I've done that, I'm going to slip stitch to join the first single crochet I made. If you have trouble seeing the first stitch of the row, just mark it with a stitch marker like I did with the last one. And I'm going to fasten off. Okay. And I'm going to weave this tail in across the back. It's nylon, so it's a little slippy. So I want to make sure that I cut a nice long tail. I make sure that that knot is really tight. And I'm going to weave it in a few times back and forth. This might, this hook might not be, or this, yeah, I can do it. I was going to say this almost looked like it wasn't going to be big enough, but I think I can do it. Vima! Hi, Vima! Vima's been a member for 37 months. Thank you so much, Vima. Vima says, hi, Jada and Mr. and Stitches. How are y'all doing? 
Hope you're all doing well. In India, our Christmas holidays starts after the 20th of December. Oh, that's nice. Do you get like a whole couple of weeks off or how's that work? I think it's it's a little bit different everywhere and even maybe right down to where you, you work. I know some companies shut down for that whole week. Others you get like Christmas Eve, maybe half a day off, Christmas Day, Boxing Day. Uh, we get Boxing Day. That's a Canadian thing apparently. I didn't know that that was a... And maybe probably the British too. I think the British do Boxing Day as well. That's why we do it. Canada doesn't really have much that's its own. <laughs> we just kind of borrow from everybody else. Trying not to break my needle here. I'm only going to weave this under a few a few uh, loops at a time just so I don't stress out my needle. See you later Deanna, thanks for being here. We have Boxing Day. Catherine, are you in the States or whereabouts are you? Pam, you don't have to have an account to get free patterns from our website. You just go to our website, go to the pattern workshop page, and that, that link is in the description box down below, and just click on whatever pattern link you want, and it'll auto-download. They're all PDFs. You don't have to have an account. The link to the pattern workshop page on our website is on top or under the chat, depending on what you're watching us on. Yeah, what device you're on. It says free patterns, and the link is there. It should look like a blue bar. And everything on that page is free to download. Yep, absolutely free. No need for an account, no need for nothing. Just pop over and download. All you have to do is like and subscribe. Yeah, we'd like that. That'd That's be nice. It. Uh, oh, so Tanya's wondering what Boxing Day is. So this is how I understand Boxing Day, and forgive me if I've got it wrong, but this is how I was always taught that Boxing Day was. Um, in the old uh, days, in Britain specifically, um, the staff in the big manor houses had to work on Christmas Day, um, and all year long, if they were, you know, doing a particularly good job, or they, you know, did something that sort of stood out, the... the um, house uh, lord would be putting like little tips or extra money into boxes for them and then on the day after Christmas that's when the the staff had their Christmas day off and they would be given everything that was in the boxes um, on this day as like a Christmas bonus and a thank you and a Christmas gift and sort of all of that wrapped into one so it got known as uh, Boxing Day now that's how I learned it if uh, somebody else has a different understanding of it. I am all ears. That's it. I'm going to cut that off. We have another membership gifted from Nico. Nico, thank you. Goodness gracious, Nico. Nico's gifted a membership. Thank you. And Robin Black has won it. Congratulations, Robin. Welcome back to the family. Okay, so this worked out amazing. I love this. Dawn is asking where she can get nylon cord. I'm going to guess... Um, like craft stores um you want to if you want to actually craft with it i would recommend the kind of nylon cord that you would get at a craft store not necessarily something that you would get at like a hardware store because that might not feel as nice um and i'm pretty sure this was macrame cording marie thank you thank you for picking up a couple Ooh, patterns tail. marie look at the difference in size same pattern different hook different yarns holy smokes this is fantastic. Okay, I this one's my favorite so far. Not the easiest stuff to work with. Not stressful. I mean, I'm not in any pain or anything. I just had to slow down and take my time. But look at that. I mean, that's really neat. That's an outdoor, outdoor decoration for sure. Let's measure. Seven and a half inches from tip to tip or 19 centimeters almost 20 centimeters across right on golly i really like that this one's cute but this one's really cool and i i especially like it because the cording lets you really see the stitches so i'm going to i'm gonna to have to give it some thought about what i'm gonna hang that with i might use something like um wire like 
um, beading wire or fishing line, something a little stronger, just because it's going to be outside. But, um, oh my gosh. I mean, I like them both, but fluffy for the inside and more suited for the outside. And I don't think the squirrels are going to steal that. I know they might try, but... <laughs> Yeah, They're paracord. They're gonna try to steal it. I I have is just thinking of the paracord there, Graybeard. I've got I've got some. Um, I got paracording to do some paracording projects that I never did, so I have some of that. It's about the same thickness, I would say. Um, so if you can get like maybe white and blue paracording, that would look really pretty. Um, so yeah, I would totally use that, and that's definitely something you can get at the craft store. Okay, I'm going to try that thing that Amanda and I were chit-chatting about. I'm going to do a slightly different center, and I'm going to go back to regular yarn. So I'm going to put these guys aside, and I'm going to grab... Will I use this? This is a smaller weight yarn. Uh, I, you know what? I'm going to get a slightly heavier weight yarn. One second, guys me thinking in real time. Uh, that's about a size four. I'll use that. And maybe a, a seven, seven hook. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. So I'm going to use, this is uh, some leftover um, Karen cotton cake that I've got here. Uh, I don't think the fiber really matters all that much. This would definitely be an inside, an inside um, decoration. Ah, there's my inside. So let's see here. I'm going to try a slightly different center. So I'm going to start, I'm going to start with a cinch circle, but I'm going to do that half double crochet, chain one half double crochet thing that I mentioned, because I think that might look really cool. So there's my chain one. I'm going to half double crochet into the cinch circle, and I'm going to just mark that Deborah, thank you so much, Deborah. Deborah has just gifted a membership, and Aaron has won it. Congratulations, Aaron. Welcome to the family. So half double crochet, which I marked with a stitch marker, just so I know that that's the beginning of the row, and then I chained one. So here we go. Half double crochet, chain one, half double crochet, chain one, half double crochet, chain one. I should be able to count these fairly easily. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, half double crochet, chain one, half double crochet, chain one. No, I don't want to chain one. Yes, I do. I want to chain one at the end. Okay, so I'm going to cinch that shut. And just to reiterate, I worked six half double crochet chain one combinations. So I should have six little spools kind of all the way around, which will become more apparent once I start working those arms. So I'm going to take off my, I'm going to cinch this up nice and tight. I'm going to join with a slip stitch to join. And I'm going to work over top of that short tail. Will I? No, I'm going to leave it to the back. Okay, so here we go. I joined in the top of my half double crochet. I'm going to, shall I start with the arm? Will I work the arms out of the, hmm. <laughs> I want the arm to sit on the top of the half double crochet because I think that might look like it's like more of a specific spiral arm. So I'm going to, I'm going to do something a little funny. I'm just going to slip stitch backwards into the chain one space that I just made before I finished that row. So I've just slip stitched backwards. Then I'm going to chain one and single crochet into that space. So you can really see that space now. So I want to reserve my chain one spaces for the single crochets. So I joined the row with a slip stitch in the top of the half double crochet but then I just slip stitched backwards into the chain one space. I guess you could also just as easily slip stitch forwards into the chain one space. However you way you want to do that, you want to start in a chain one space. 
then chain one single crochet in the chain one space. And that frees you up to work your arms in the tops of the half double crochet. So here I go. I'm gonna double crochet into the top of the half double crochet from the previous row. I'm gonna make those little toes. So chain three and slip stitch into the second and third chains. And then I chain two and I slip stitch into the second chain and then into the base of the chain three, which is right here. And then I chain two again and slip stitch into the second chain and into the chain three, which is a bigger, the base of the chain three becomes larger, usually when you're using regular yarn. And then I'm gonna double crochet into the same stitch again, which is the top of that half double crochet. Then importantly, I'm looking for the chain one space in between and I'm gonna single crochet right into that chain one space. Yeah. All right, and then I start over again. I'm gonna half double crochet into the top of the half double crochet and work another arm. Would you recommend sparkle yarn or metallic yarn? for this pattern? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we had a question from Vima and... Absolutely. Oh, someone else mentioned sparkle yarn. I can't find sparkle it. Sparkle yarn and... Um, sparkle yarn or metallic yarn? Absolutely. It would be gorgeous. And then a single crochet into the space. Got to get past a couple arms before I can really tell if this, this does make the center a little bit bigger of the snowflake. So, I don't know. We'll see how this turns out. I think it'll, it'll work. I'm just not sure if it'll look that much different. into the chain one space. Hmm. Let's just pull these guys out, take a look. It's definitely giving it more of a, of a, a center, uh, like a bigger center. And then into the top of the chain, I should say into the top of the half double crochet stitch, I'm working another arm. Oops. One slip stitch into the second and third chains. One, two. Keep the questions coming. I'm happy to answer them about the snowflakes. I just, sorry guys, I don't have my eyes on the chat today. I'm, um, as you're, much as I normally do. You're trying do. to work out a brand new pattern. Yeah, now. I'm, I'm uh, paying close attention to what I'm doing here. <laughs> Um, I'm going to send a, the results of a poll your way. Oh, okay. We have 155 I will votes. Pause here. Where do you start Christmas holidays? Oh, great. I'm glad you asked that. After Thanksgiving in the USA, 52%. November 1st, 23%. All year, baby. 17%. Don't do Christmas, 7%. Poll complete. 156 votes. That's fantastic. So most of you kind of get going after the end of November. Yeah, I can see that. I, uh, I, I think if you make stuff for the holidays, you kind of have to get started a little bit earlier. But maybe you don't start actually, you know, decorating, playing music, putting up the tree, all that stuff. All right, one more arm left. Boy, this is such a, a switch up to go from the cord and the stiff blanket yarn back to like a really soft, malleable yarn. It's, <laughs> it's night and day different. I also was able to make one a lot faster. That's so funny. 
There we go. And half double crochet, or I should say double crochet back into there. And then slip stitch to join in that first single crochet. All right, so let's fasten off. And we'll see what we think. Tails woven in here. I uh, always recommend these little snowflakes as little present toppers. Uh, maybe something to hang off the edge of a stocking, or um, if they're just like a little pick me up, nice little gift for somebody around the the holidays, or heck, all winter long. I mean, it's a snowflake; it doesn't have to be specifically Christmas. And, uh, but they really look cute on a, on top of a, a, a present. I made a whole bunch one year in crochet thread with a size like two millimeter hook. They're really, really small. They're the daintiest little things. Um, and I gave them away as Christmas gifts. They also, they were so small they would fit in a Christmas card. So that's something. If you want to include a little gift in a Christmas card, if you want to make these using crochet thread and a small hook, like a size two millimeter, which is super small, and then add a little thread to hang it with. It'll fit in a card and it's not very heavy and it's a lovely little thing to fall out of the card when the card arrives. Crochet with Diane, member for 38 months. Hi, thank you so much, Diane. Diane says, hi everyone, I'm making a snowflake in weight four yarn. Absolutely, that is the original. This is a weight four that I made just now. And I changed up the middle a little bit. So instead of the cinch circle and 12 single crochet, I did a cinch circle and half double crochet, chain one six times. So I still end up with 12 stitches and it does make for a larger middle. Um, I don't know, nothing wrong with that. Might be a little easier to see if you wanted to start with a larger center. That one's cute too. Good, let's look at this. I've made four here. Um, all right, I'd like Mr. and Stitches to start a poll. Mr. and Stitches. Yep, I'm here, just pressing buttons. Pressing buttons. I'd like to do a poll. Okay. Uh, I'd like to know which one wins today. So, oh, uh, ooh, that's a fun poll. Best, uh, which? So, what do we'll just call them? Uh, one, two, three, four. Yeah. So, nylon is the biggest. So, one. Number one is the nylon. It's the biggest. Okay. Um, number two is the blanket yarn. It's the second biggest. Uh, number three is with the weight four yarn, but it's got the new center. And number four is the original, the smallest. Can I recommend a baby blanket pattern for a rainbow baby? Says Tracy. Uh, a rainbow baby. Okay, so uh, there's a billion of these little um, phrases. I understand a rainbow baby to be the baby that shows up after a, a baby didn't make it. Is that? how you guys understand a rainbow baby. Um, a baby is a baby, so I recommend making a baby blanket that is uh, cheerful and cozy. That is always my go-to. Um, and we've got a whole bunch, they're all really easy. So I guess it depends on like kind of the, the kind of the size maybe you wanna make or how fancy you wanna make it. Um, we've got an actual rainbow baby blanket pattern over in our Etsy shop. It's a corner to corner blanket pattern. It's rectangular, it's very simple. It's that traditional corner to corner block pattern, but it's striped and you can stripe it in any colors you want, but we striped it in rainbow pastels, which is just beautiful. Um, so if you literally want to make a rainbow baby blanket for a rainbow baby, that's kind of fun. Um, but you can also just do a regular baby blanket in any lovely colors you want. If you don't know the um, what's coming for a baby, like if you want to make it blue or pink, I totally get that. But if you don't know what um, is coming and you want to stay away from the usual like yellows and greens, I recommend bright red and white because red is the first color 
we see um, and it's it helps stimulate brain activity and there's just something about red and white it is so cheerful and bright um, so yeah you maybe want to consider that and you can get baby yarn in red um, Lion Brand Pound of Love comes in like a whole whack of different colors, so they don't you don't have to stick to the traditional baby pastels either, which is also kind of fun. All right, so Mr. and Stitches is running the poll, I take it? Yes, the poll is up. Uh, leave them in their position on the screen. Okay, I will. While everyone uh, One, votes. two, three, and four. So we're just waiting for more votes to come in. I we're just, uh, I'm looking, I'm looking at this one on the screen. It really does look like frosting. Somebody said it looked like frosting on yes, gingerbread. Yes, that one does look like frosting. It does. It looks like frosting. Mm -hmm. This one's really shiny and it actually is because it's nylon. This one's cotton and it's pretty. And this one is also <laughs> cotton, but it's a smaller You cannot yarn. vote twice. I don't think the YouTube system lets you do that. And there's no room for all of the above. I know everyone always wants an all of the above um, option, but there isn't always room for that. <laughs> I I love them all, don't get me wrong, but I want to know which one won today. So in my opinion, I will tell you, I'll give you my opinion after we see the vote. Yeah, let's wait till everyone votes first. Um, I really like them um, all. Yes, so... If you absolutely had to choose. Yes, you have to choose. This is like life and death situation here. <laughs> life and death snowflake, snowflake situation. is you your know, favorite? They show up every year. One, two, three, or four. <laughs> <laughs> life and death snowflake. I I uh, I like how these all came out. I think this was this was this was definitely a good experiment. I love experimenting. That's one of my favorite things to do in crochet. Um, this was an absolute experiment, but once again, it's 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 so fun to take a pattern, this little black guy here, and you can make it look so different and for so many different purposes just by changing the hook and the yarn. Um, I, this is this is a clear winner. I just love this. I okay, will be making... I want to try something um, a little different. We're gonna. I'm going to zoom right in. Okay. And you're going to put uh, the snowflakes one at a time right in the center. So everyone okay. can get a real good close up. Okay. So we're going to we're going to do them in order of 1 2 3 4. Okay. So let me find the uh, the button here. We'll start with the big one. All right. You tell me when you want me to pick yeah, it up. Yeah, you can start. So you want me to just pick yeah. this up? No, like put just put them in the middle of the screen. Oh, just so put them in the them middle of the screen. screen. Yeah, like that. Okay. As a little higher up. Okay. There we go. So we'll give uh, 10 seconds per snowflake. So that'll be number one. Okay, so this is number one. This is the nylon. I made it using this crazy cord, this uh, nylon, what I believe is macrame crafting cord, and a nine millimeter hook. Um, so that is a an N hook. No, M. That's an M hook. That's a big big hook. Um, and I, I mean, you can use whatever big hook you need to if you're going to use the cording. But I, I did try to go for like tighter stitches just so that it was a little stiff um i think it worked out can we get a measure on that please yes we're gonna do this we're gonna do it correctly <laughs> this is almost um eight it's seven and a half inches seven or 19 half inches 19 centimeters from point to point so it's that's the, pretty big it's pretty big mm -hmm. yeah this is definitely going to be outside this is an you out might be able to change your vote um i I'm, i don't know you can try if you click on a different answer, it might change it. I'm not sure. Everyone's getting all nervous now because we're getting serious. This is serious <laughs> here. This is life and death. Life and death snowflaking. Snowflake choice. <laughs> all right. Is that kidding. enough for number we one? I'm kidding. <laughs> all right. So let's do number two. Okie dokie. So number two is... A little higher up. The okay. blanket, the blanket weight yarn. Um, this one, this is the blanket, the baby blanket yarn. So it's polyester as opposed to nylon. And it looks like frosting. It looks like I took a piping, uh, a piping bag and I piped frosting all over the table here. 
Um, nice and soft. This one is for indoor use. I've already got my little thread hanger on it. I'll be hanging it off of a curtain rod. Um, this one is six inches from point to point or 15 centimeters. So that's a pretty good size as well. And I used an L hook or an eight millimeter for this one with the baby blanket yarn. So if you have leftover baby blanket yarn, um, it makes pretty decent snowflakes. We might be uh, we might be pulling the lurkers out of the shadows with this one. <laughs> this is great. We got 146 votes so nice. far. Nice. So let's uh, let's go to number three. Number three. Okay. So number three is the little experiment. Amanda asked about changing up the stitch pattern on the inside, and I gave this a try. So instead of 12. Um, single crochets in the center. I did half double crochet, chain one, six times all the way around. And then I made sure that I built the arms of the snowflake into the top of the half double crochet. So it's got a slightly larger middle. I used um, a seven millimeter hook, um, also known as a 4.5 millimeter. So seven, size seven hook, 4.5 millimeter. It's kind of right between a G6 and an H. And I used a regular size for medium weight yarn. This is a cotton cake, a Karen cotton cake, a little bit of leftover of that. This one measures out to be three and a quarter inches or eight and a half centimeters. So that's the diameter of that one. That's a nice little size. It would look really cute on a present uh, topper. You could hang it with a bit of thread. Uh, so that's a really nice size for a little ornament for the tree, I would say. Are we good with that one? Yes, we okay. are good with that one. And so moving on to the original. And final one. This is the original pattern. I so, keep having to zoom in more and more every I know, time. this one's really, really tiny. Um, <laughs> This one, I used a size three cotton yarn, so a lightweight size three cotton yarn, and I used a, an E hook, a 3.5 millimeter hook, an E hook for that one. And this one is two and a half inches across or about seven centimeters. So it is the smallest by far. You can make them even smaller. I don't have any with me today, but I have made them before using crochet thread and a steel hook, and they get even smaller, um, and they look they look exquisite, and they can fit <laughs> nice and flat inside a Christmas card. So. It's a flake off, says Carolyn. It's a flake off. <laughs> this is as exciting as crochet will ever get, everybody. Fake flake versus this, flake. This is peak crochet excitement. So there we go. That's uh, four, three. Okay, I'm gonna pull the two, camera back. And one. We'll put them back in order. One, two, three, four. So we'll do another minute for the um, for those that haven't voted yet. Um, if the poll box is being wonky, it could have to do with the connection. Um, you might want to back out and come back in, or close your. Uh, chat box and come back into the video. We'll give everyone a minute if you need to do that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the chat, uh, the voting boxes kind of mess up a little bit. I. Uh, um, you can also put your vote in the chat. Um, yes. Uh, it won't calculate, but we can see it. <laughs> Good one, Ellen. It's Pico Crochet Excitement. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's good. Well done. <laughs> Love it. So I'm just going to wait a minute for those that are leaving sure. and coming back. If anybody has any further questions about this particular pattern, please let me know. Again, we've got a succinct tutorial on how to do it linked below and a free pattern for you all. So please feel free to avail yourself of that over on our website. And no, you don't need a... a, a uh, a login or a membership or an account or anything to use our website. Um, all of our uh, our regular web pages. They're just it's a it's a tool page. We've got free patterns over there. 
Um, it's a place for you guys to just sort of go and, and um, have information all in one place. Mr. and Stitches keeps a, a curation of all of our uh, calendar blanket projects over there. Um, so yeah, and that's the picture you're looking for, the thumbnail photograph. This is one of our original uh, tutorials that we did here on the channel quite a while ago. Krista wants to know when there's going to be another wine night. <laughs> another I don't know. Wine I haven't night. had wine Christmas in quite is a while. Coming. Yeah, Christmas is coming. Maybe we'll do another uh, li a Christmas live stream. Like a Christmas last live year. stream. That might be or fun. Or Christmas Eve. When did we, did we do that? Christmas Eve? I think we did. Well, we did one um, the week leading up the, to Christmas. The week leading up, yeah. Yeah, that was nice. Another wine. <laughs> Christina asks, quick question, making snowmen. The pattern calls for four weight yarn and a four millimeter hook. I want to use three weight yarn. What size hook should I use? Well, it depends on the pattern. It depends on your own... Um, tension so i would recommend using the same hook to start make a few stitches and see if it's a bit too loose uh because sometimes there isn't much of a difference between three weight and four weight sometimes there is just depends on the yarn um, and it depends on the pattern sometimes the pattern can cause your stitches to be tight and sometimes the pattern can cause your stitches to be loose so i would try um the first few stitches with the same hook and your chosen yarn and if it does, it feels a little too loose, then go down like a half a hook size. So like I would go down um, from a four millimeter to like a three and a half millimeter. But at that size, hook size, it's already pretty small. So um, I would try it with the same hook to start with. Okay, Nothing? I'm going to wrap up the poll. Sure. Um, there are some votes in the chat. We can skim them quickly, but let's... Bobby's right. The magical thing is all the snowflakes are actually different. See, snowflakes are all unique, right? Yes, so even though it's like true. the same technical pattern... So you can never go wrong, in other words. It's it's That's so cool. It's a good pattern to start with. <laughs> Here it comes. All right. Which snowflake is your favorite? Three. This is number three. 30%. Number two, top right, that would have been this one, 25%. Top left, number one, would have been this one, 25%. And the bottom right, the original, 18%. So pretty even, pretty even, but this guy won. So this the, the experimental one, that one won with 30% of the vote. I am really fascinated. Wow. There you go. Now, if we skim the chat, for those that couldn't vote, um, let's see, we've got a mixture of, I'm seeing the most, I'm seeing fours. The odd one, the odd three. So this is the four. But I'm seeing four a lot mm -hmm. in the chat. Yes. Um, I, I'm gonna threes. say. These people may have voted, one, three, one, three. Hmm. It's pretty pretty darn close. Pretty darn close. Okay, yeah. so I'm my vote is this one. I love how this one turned out. This one's my favorite, and my runner up is this one because it literally looks like frosting. <laughs> um, I love I love them all, but this one this one was such an experiment, and it turned out so well. I'm really excited about that. I like that that we can put that one outside, and yeah. it's probably gonna stay stay stiff. It's gonna stay stiff, yeah. and it won't like fade because it it's nylon. Yeah, it won't uh, welt or. Fold. Yeah, Nico, thank Nico. you. Nico has gifted a membership. Thank you so much, Nico. And uh, Carmelita has won it. Congratulations and welcome to the family. Um, I'm. This was my favorite. I think. I think. I think it's exciting because I get to hang it outside. I love the way it turned out. I like how the stitches are really awesome. And I was just sitting here, guys, thinking that if you made this out of like the same stiff thickness. Um, like a, a really thick cotton, like if you held, say, three strands of cotton together and tried this, or wool even, uh, this would make a pretty awesome pot holder. Like it's a, it's about as thick as a trivet, and uh, you could easily slap a big, a big heavy pot down on that. But you'd want it to be a non-meltable uh, fiber. Like this is nylon, it would melt under a hot pot. So I would recommend like cotton. But um, that would, that would actually be a pretty neat pot holder. <laughs> Oh, my, my brain is kind of excited with all, these, all this snowflake talk. So this one's going outside, this one's going in the window, and these two are going to be either present toppers or little ornaments, little to hang on the tree, or both, I guess. You could use one as a present topper that is meant to hang on the tree. Um, once again, guys, the tutorial for this is linked below, so if you want a quick recap, it's there for you. The free pattern is over on our website. 
Um, if you have any questions about this pattern in particular, um, or any others, feel free to leave them on the comment section of any of our videos. I do try to get to comments at least once or twice a week, and uh, we do read them all, so um, we are always trying to help out where we can with, with uh, questions about our tutorials and our patterns. And um, we'll, got, we'll see you Friday. I hope you guys had fun with us today. Mr. and Stitches, do you have anything you'd like to add? No, I think you covered it all. Frosty Just, uh, or thanks otherwise. Thanks, everyone, for joining us today, and we'll see you soon. Yes. Oh, and Brenda, I see you there. Um, I, will, I will get you that pattern. <laughs> Um, if you guys run into trouble with the Etsy shop, um, sometimes I know some of you buy something and you have trouble with the downloads. It's not you. It's really not you. There, it, the, the whole thing can be so complicated. Sometimes Etsy glitches out. Um, there's always, a, there could be a billion reasons why uh, it's you're having trouble with it. So never, never worry about reaching out and asking us to help because uh, that's why we're there. So if you have questions about anything you purchase in our Etsy shop, or if you ever have trouble kind of getting a hold of your pattern file, just let us know. We'll help you out. And uh, we're there usually all day. So, <laughs> and that's where I'm going right now. <laughs> so we will see you guys Friday. Thanks